Oh, um, Jasmine, could we, uh, could we make it like five minutes, like speeches five minutes and then like, uh, five minutes and three minutes, uh, for, for three minutes for the, the rebuttals or whatever? Um, no. No. Doesn't that change the debate? Like, that just changes the kind of flow of what everyone else is used to? Um, and I don't know if like the 1AC can fit into that amount of time, or the 1NC can fit into that amount of time. So I don't want to, you know, affect okay. strategies. Okay, yeah. Uh, but I mean, if you want your personal speech to be shorter, that can be something that you do. But I'm yeah, just okay. gonna make that like the statement for everyone to follow. Mm -hmm. So how are y'all doing? Good, how are you? Doing pretty good as well. Sorry. I, I thought I thought we'd open with something nice. No, definitely y'all can have conversation. I'm just doing all this for recording. But we're gonna get started because I know this is gonna take a good hour and a half and some of y'all are doing COD. So you're gonna be a little late to that. So, you know, the vibes. But, all righty, because it's going on YouTube, I'm gonna say hello to everyone. Hi, 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 hi. Welcome to SLC practice for the week of March 14th, I believe. This is the Friday SLC. And today, instead of a lecture, we're going to have a practice demonstration debate from some of your fellow bottle folks. Um, and I think everyone is representing the high school Oakland Tech. So super exciting. Who do we have on the affirmative, y'all? Uh, me and Enzo. Uh, Dylan and Enzo. Enzo and Dylan. And then on the negative, we have Jan and Nuriel. So that's really, really exciting. Um, if everyone could do a freeze frame real quick for the thumbnail. So one, two, three. Awesome. So it's going to track that. Um, we're going to get started. A few um, just kind of bottle things to say is that do not forget if you are watching this to register or to talk to your coach or your bottle staff um, to register you for the April 17th tournament. That is the final bottle tournament of the season. It is Saturday and, or it's either Friday or Saturday, Saturday or Sunday, it was 7th and 18th. So I think the 17th is a Saturday. So it is Saturday and, is it a Friday? Noriel, is that you talking to me? No, that's not you talking to me. So that's Saturday and Sunday. Um, it is the championship tournament. So we want to see everyone who is able to attend um, there because it's gonna be a fun time. And don't forget that we have our bottle lead practices every single week. We have our novice practice, our JV open practice, which for the next month is going to be led by Jacob Smith, um, an alum from the University of Oklahoma. I know him personally. We were um, classmates with each other and fellow folks on our college debate team. So super excited for him to be imparting some of his knowledge um, about debate and um, teaching the JV Open folks. And then not for, or that happens on Tuesdays, the novice practice happens on Wednesdays from 3.30 to 5.30. And last but not least is our Student Leadership Council um, meeting that happens every Friday or every Friday that does not um, coincide with an SLC tournament from 4.30 to 6.30, where a combination of lectures and or practice debates such as this one go down. So without further ado, we're gonna get started with this debate and have the affirmative get started. So, all right, 1A, let's get to it. One minute, sorry, I have a lot of tabs open. I'm trying to find the right one. No worries. I got a lot of time right. myself. It's not a habit. That is the best for myself. I'm only speaking for me. It gets a little confusing, especially when right. this separated. And you forget, what was that? What was that one tab? Was it important? It feels important, so it stays. All right. I think yeah, I got it up here. Um, Wait, just uh, my timer. Just oh, to double no. check, the, the neg is running the counter plan, right? Again. Okay. All right. Judge ready? Yep. 
The United States federal government should defund and disband the Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE. Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE is engaged in an ethnic cleansing campaign geared toward eradicating black and brown immigrants from the United States. ICE's platform relies on racist rhetoric that immigrants are a threat to national security. Mikuwe 18. Dan Cannon is running for Congress in Indiana's 9th District this year. This year. As, a, as a career civil rights lawyer, Cannon filed one of his cases against gay marriage bans. Cannon was also defending clients swept up by ICE raids and fought a deportation system that at one point wouldn't even disclose the location of his client. Now Cannon believes ICE should be abolished entirely. ICE is a presently exists in an agency devoted solely and, and cruelly breaking up families. The agency talks about treat and treats human beings like they're animals. They scoop up people inside their apartments or workplaces and take them miles away from their spouses and children. The idea of defunding ICE has gained traction among immigrant rights groups Horrified by it, the speech which under president, the agency has ramped up an already brutal deportation progress. Policymakers need the need to be honest about the change that the core of the agency has broken. ICE is terrorizing American communities right now. They're going into schools, entering hospitals, and conducting a conductive conducting massive raids. We are funding these activities and we need to use all the leverage we can to stop it. But the goal to, of abolishing ICE is to abolish the function. The goal to abolish the agency is to abolish the function. ICE has become a genuine threat to democracy and it is destro destroying thousands of lives. Moreover, abolishing it would only take us back to 2003 when ICE was first formed. ICE is a, a direct product of the post-September 11 panic culture. The agency increased surveillance of all communities of color and immigration communities. By putting ICE under the scope of DHS, the government framed it as a national security issue rather than a an issue of community development, diversity, or human rights. Dems still explicitly use anti-immigration sentiment as a campaign tactic. Even Obama pr presided over the aggr aggressive tactics in his first term of office to, to build support for a path to citizenship that never came. The central assumption of ICE is that any undocumented immigrant is inherently a threat. ICE's modus operandi under Trump bears a striking resemblance to the strategy proposed by white supremacists. This is nearly a perfect summary of ICE under acting director Thomas Hogan, who has repeatedly made it clear that all undocumented Residents should be afraid of his agency. You should look over your shoulder and you need to be worried. He boasted in his congressional testimony last year. The agency has clearly been targeting political opponents for deportations that have worked to deport individuals for speaking to the media about ICE. After a long and protracted history of sexual assault and uninvestigated deaths in ICE detention facilities, as well as the corrosive impact ICE has had on our schools, communities, and courts, it is time to reset course. Suraj Patel, a child of immigrant parents, is running well-funded insurgent campaign against Democratic incumbent Representative Carolyn Maloney in New York's 12th district, 12th, 12th congressional district. He was to vote to fund ICE as if it made it to Congress. ICE has never crossed a red line under the president by harassing, pursuing, and terrorizing immigrant activists all over the country of impunity. The mass deportations are forced to forced immigrant to immigrants to live in fear. Well, making the rest of us feel safe, he said. Defunding ICE and returning it to its passport control and customs enforcement rather than an above law deportation squad is critical to, to protecting all Americans and our civil liberties. Instead of making our communities safer, ICE has taught immigrants to fear and distrust law enforcement. They called up all ICE's above all demand for resisting unbridled white supremacist surveillance state that has had its hand in creating. White supremacy can go no law, can go can no longer be the center of the immigration debate. Next to death, being stripped from your home, family, and communities, the worst fate inflicted on a human. Affirmative calls for the end of funding as to ICE as well as dismantling of legislation that supports the agency. Any reform to deep any reform to deportation feel, fails and should be outright rejected. Then day 18. We literally mean disband the agency. Trump's Trump's detention squad should cease to exist. Immigration enforcement as we know it should end. What does this mean in practice? A moratorium on deportations and end on all immigrant detention. We need to establish a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to examine abuses perpetrated by the ICE, CBP, USCIS, and TSA. We need reparations disbanded to the millions of people who have been terrorized by ICE. Let's create a future free of ICE, free of the possibility that any future president will have at their disposal a police force who will solely, sole purpose is to terrorize immigrant communities. We need it politically invisible for Congress to continue to support the immigration enforcement. We need to defund ICE and we need legislation that dismantles the agency. We don't need ICE to be de deformed 
reformed. We need it gone. We need we don't need our deportations to be better managed. We need our people free. Reform is not good enough. Abolition leads to a freer society, and that's good and it opens the door for more progressive policies. Sincero Mehar 18. We are used to the abolitionist language seem really extreme or long term or pie in the sky, and yet we have seen this claim take root and spread, partly because of the real brutality of what ICE is doing and the transparency of what is going on. Abolishing points towards the potential and possibility of claim to actually come about. Talking talking about abolishing something is just an intermediate demand because the last thing that we want to see is ICE simply replaced. We need to be very careful to tether the demand to abolish ICE and the demand to not replace it. We want to roll back the powers that, that have been granted to Border Patrol in the recent decades and the dramatic expansion of the agency with dramatic expansion of its budget and expansion of its ground force board and border. We want a radical transformation that ultimately points towards border, border abolition. We don't want to get caught up in acting if our ultimate goal is that we get trapped in the mere replacement of it with something else. We, we need to abolish the we need to abolish it on the way to building a different kind of world. Failing to speak out against ICE makes us morally complicit within its ethnic cleansing campaign. This revolting ethnic cleansing conducted with our government approved fascist terrorist force has been the top target or a top target at least. So we do not speak out against this agency who are culpable of the ethnic cleansing of our nation. Abolish ICE solves to racial animosity towards immigrant communities and rejects white supremacy, Allen 18. In a few months, abo hashtag abolish ICE has gone from a relatively obscure leftist rallying cry to a fully fledged campaign promise embraced by candidates across the nation. But ICE was created in 2003 under the scope of DHS, which inherently signified that the immigration would be considered as a matter of national security, a highly racialized sentiment that was embraced. This is enforcement agency has taken on more than of more of par paramilitary tone every single day has no accountability with the DOJ and this is a very institution this is very little institutional knowledge or history due process with ICE it's basically a product of the Bush era Patriot Act suite of legislation immigration status doesn't even need to exist it is about our it is about the very roots of our modern day immigration system how we choose not to accept it in the modern day. I reject the racist, outdated premises that we need to we need to treat immigration as a national security threat, that any immigration status should be criminalized and that any human being is just illegal. We cannot keep watching as our immigrant families are torn apart and undocumented Americans are dehumanized simply because of their documentation status. There's no excuse for being for not being part of the abolish ICE movement. All right, I only have 10 seconds left anyways. I yield the rest of my time. Cool. Oh my gosh, that was my timer. Um, are y'all open for cross -ex? Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Starting time. Oh, also, are you guys okay with um, tag teaming? Yeah. Uh, how much time is cross -ex again? Three minutes. All right. Starting time uh, now. Okay, my first question is, uh, are you claiming to solve for white supremacy? The goal of, uh, no. Okay. Um, how are you stopping deportations? Uh, the way we're stopping deportations is that we are um, abolishing ICE. So how does abolishing ICE stop deportation? ICE is the agency that is, are, are the guys who deport, is the deportation squad. Okay, so let me ask. So after ICE is abolished, deportation just won't happen anymore. Dylan. Okay. Um, um, deportations will be like very, they will go down increasing an increasingly amount and... Um, yeah, but there, there, there could still be. Um, so there's still agencies. okay. So to clarify, there is still deportations after the affirmative happens uh, with with other agencies that there so, possibly could be. Okay, cool. So agencies will circumvent. Great. No. Um, okay. Next. So what does the world of the app look like, or what does the world of the app look like? After after we abolish ice. Mm -hmm. Um. I'll just first starting off by saying. The world after ice will look like a much safer and much more. How is it much safer? What are you doing to make you, it safer for 
immigrants. Abolishing ICE is, it's not just, it's not just the programs that ICE is creating. It's also the name of ICE. The name ICE spreads fear among immigrant communities. Mm -hmm. So then these other agencies that will circumvent because deportation still exists, right? Um, they don't have to be ICE. They just have to be a different program. We're not saying that at all. Mm, okay. Okay, so is ICE the, um, is ICE a symptom or the cause of white supremacy? Oh, it's just another step forward in the- But is it a symptom the or the root? Is ICE the symptom or the root of white supremacy? Abolishing ICE will create a step, a large step forward into getting rid of white supremacy in its entirety. So are you claiming to solve for fear? What are no, you solving he for? He just said it's a large step towards helping solve that eventually. Okay, how Help long is that take? So when so when so when does white supremacy no longer exist? Um the, that, we, don't, we the, can't we can't tell. We don't know. Much sooner than the NAG plan. Uh okay, I'm gonna move on. Which part of the United the USFG is going to be enacting your plan? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? You Which up? part of the USFG is enacting your plan? Who's doing it? We have. Okay. Um, I don't need any uh, time. So. All right, cool. Is everybody ready? Okay. Um, Starting timer in three, two, one. The United States federal government should end arbitrary immigration enforcement by reforming immigration laws to change all immigration crimes into civil offenses, directing the HSI to focus immigration enforcement solely on criminal and national security threats. Abolishing ICE is politically infeasible and doesn't resolve anything. Reforming I HSI solves best. Uh, that's Norwash 18. The abolished ICE movement is largely political grandstanding without much substance. There's not much point in abolishing ICE if another, if another government agency then gains the same power. The goal is to limit interior and in immigration enforcement to serious criminals and remove the constant fear felt by law-abiding immigrants. These are two legal, there are two legal reforms that will functionally abolish ICE without disbanding the agency. First, reform immigration law to change all crimes into civil offenses. The second is to recognize HSI by giving the responsibility of ERO. Both reforms will substantially weaken immigration enforcement for non-criminals and abolish the worst parts of ICE without removing its ability to deport serious criminals and national security threats. Transforming all criminal immigration offenses into civil violations guts much of the political rationale for cracking down on illegal immigration. Abolish ERO and revamp HSI. HSI investigates and enforces the most serious criminal violations committed by illegal immigrants involving national security and transnational uh, crime. ERO mostly partners with Border Patrol and local law enforcement agencies to apprehend illegal immigrants who haven't committed crimes. Congress should then abolish ERO and claim a major victory against capricious enforcement of immigration laws. This ring organization will focus immigrant and immigration enforcement on criminals and national security threats. Abolish ICE without removing its ability to deport serious criminals and to lift the specter of harsh immigration enforcement on otherwise law-abiding communities. The reform would accomplish the overall goal of prote protecting HSI's important work while also offering a bureaucratic sacrifice in the form of a disbanded ERO. These two reforms would largely accomplish the goals of the abolished ICE movement without the difficulty of abolishing ICE. The plan would get rid of HSI uh, division, of the HSI division, while well, 18. ICE is Homeland Security, HSI, the HSI um, division, will be split off of ICE. The ERO, the guys who bust down the doors, are harming the entire agency's reputation and undermining other law enforcement agencies um, and their willingness to cooperate. That's bad. HSI is vital to investigate and resolve trafficking cases. The impact is massive violence, Robertson 17. In 2005, HSI created BEST. Um, the team is crucial to security, drug smuggling, weapons trafficking, intellectual property rights, money laundering, and a variety of other disciplines. That's where BEST steps in. Agencies search dozens of cargo containers, uh, anything coming in through the port illegally. Everything the BEST team does is aimed at public safety and national security. Child pornography and child exploitation are at the top of the priority list for HSI. The agency investigates those crimes that target children. HSI agents have taken many child predators off the streets. In 2016, HSI agents arrested more than 2,600 online predator, child predators and identified nearly 1,000 victims. Sex trafficking is another big priority for HSI. People don't realize how bad it can be. These victims are given quotas 
where they have to meet with buyers of sex up to 15 times a night, thousands of rapes that happen for the profit over the course of a year. And they'll uncover even more victims. HSI has been involved in several cases that ended with traffickers being behind guards, bars and pleading guilty. Banning ICE won't solve abusive detention um, detention or family separation. The Border Patrol, the, U the USCIS and Department of Justice will continue. Dunlap 19. Um, Philippe Gonzalez Alonso, an eight-year-old an eight-year-old boy died on Christmas Eve in the custody of a CBP. Enforcement and ERO, a unit within ICE, identifies migrants who are potentially removable, finds them, arrests them, and incarcerates them, prosecutes them by showing them they are removable and affects their physical removal from the U.S. territory. Like ICE, CBP also inc in, uh, incarcerates migrants. DOJ plays a significant role in the enforcement of U.S. immigration laws. DOJ prosecutes individuals for illegal entry and illegal re-entry. ICE plays but one part in a much larger bureaucracy designed to determine which human beings merit inclusion in the U.S. political community. ICE did not emerge from a void. Rather, ICE was born after a punitive vent in criminal justice uh, and criminal justice and immigration policy had already created the conditions for mass deportation, uh, for mass detention and deportation. I'm moving on to case. Multiple agencies involved that will exploit numerous loopholes to continue deportation, Dunlap 19. Uh, ICE is just one part of much larger immigration enforcement bureaucracy. CBP also incarcerates migrants. The U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services has the power to initiate removal proceedings involved in detention and deportation. Other agencies administer immigration laws. ICE plays but one part in a much larger bureaucracy. Abolish ICE is not complete policy proposal and doesn't change broader immigration laws, Sure, 18. No more ICE, no more victims, no more vicious deportations. But it's not that simple. Abolishing is an agency. Abolishing an agency doesn't abolish immigration laws. Abolish ICE advocates dance around questions of if and how exactly those laws would be enforced. Abolish ICE is not so much a policy proposal as a fresh cudgel to divide the Democratic Party between establishment politicians and left wing insurgents. There is no policy that replaces this plan. Sure, 18. What exactly do abolish ICE proponents want in place of their current regime? They don't exactly say. Why aren't abolish ICE advocates focused on current immigration laws? The vote in 2000 was not a standalone vote to, to creating ICE. It was the vote for the bureaucratic reorganization that creates the DHS, which created ICE out of a piece of the former INS. Nothing about the shift uh, portended a more aggressive deportation policy and did not generate any controversy at the time. Judge, essentially what is happening here is that even if they get are able to abolish ICE, which they haven't clarified how they're even going to go about doing this, there is no, there is no law, there is no policy in place that stops deportation happening. They even admitted in cross -ex that other agencies will come in and just intervene and deportation will continue. These families will continue to be, to be torn apart, will continue to experience all the fear just because ICE doesn't exist. It doesn't stop. There's nothing stopping um, any agency from coming in and taking over ICE. The CBP and DHS are already, or CB, yeah, the CBP and other agencies like that are already doing that. There's nothing stopping those agencies from becoming the next ICE. Versus if you do this counter plan, at least we know one, we're using, um, we're using a political means in order to uh, establish the fact that, okay, to establish the fact that um, one, it's no longer a one strike policy and that only civil, it's only the civil, uh, the civil offenses aren't being taken to the court, but rather the ones that are offended by the state. Um, sorry, that's okay. The U the U.S. Department of Justice, like particularly the DHS and Executive Office for Immigration, handles all matters of deportation. They're all agencies that will do this stuff. It's not only ICE, and it's yeah, um, mm, yeah. The the app continues to strike this like they make this idea that if we abolish ICE, then all immigrants should feel safe in this country. All immigrants will be able to um, live peacefully and don't have to worry about being deported. But that's not true. Agencies will circumvent. Their plan isn't feasible. Like, mm, OK, again, Judge, you need to be voting for um, you need to be voting for the night because we are the only ones offering you a clear idea as to one, how specifically we're going to be able to solve for this fear of immigration by focusing on the HSI. And we're not ignoring sex trafficking in the same way that um, in the same way that the AF, the AF is doing by completely getting rid of the HSI division. Um, for all of the above, ooh, they are also creating false hope by saying that they're going to be safe, that immigrants will be safe. So for all of the, for all of the above, you should be voting nay. That's my time. I'm open for process.
All right. Um, wouldn't you say that even with your plan, there would still be vicious deportations of other agencies too? Because there's other agencies do deportations, like you said. What, what Sorry. is your question? Oh, no. Yeah. Wouldn't you say with your plan, there would still be deportations as well? No, because we're getting rid of the we're getting rid we're getting rid of deportations of the innocent people. If you read our plan, it's literally saying that the HSI and um, the other agencies best well, HSI's agency. Oh, you, let me let me finish. The HSI's agency best is literally designed to take out the serious criminals, the ones who are actually doing illegal things. ERO, we say in our uh, counter plan, ERO is the one busting down doors and creating havoc. It is not HSI, and it's and not And also, best. in your, in your, in your, uh, what, what did you mean by you said in Nowatesh eighteen? You said HSI will get rid of the responsibility of ERO, and by giving HSI the responsibility of ERO, doesn't that allow for HSI to continue those unlawful deportations? You said no, in your, in Nowatesh eighteen, you guys said HSI gets the responsibility of ERO. What do you mean by that? So what we're saying is that ERO, their only job is to do that. And they're obviously not doing it well. We've all seen how that worked out. Mm -hmm. HSI is clearly the team that is able to focus better on capturing actual people who are um, actual immig illegal immigrants. But I thought you said that on. ERO busts down doors of innocent people. So when yeah, HSI do the no, same thing? No, 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 thing? no, no, because you're, you're not reading the cards right where it says that best and hsi's goal is to remove the people who are actual serious criminals who are actually but i thought um, ero bust down doors of innocent people of innocent by giving... people these people who are um exploiting children for freaking sex you, all you're the, the one who said innocent, innocent people. people they're not you said ero people. busting down the doors of innocent people yeah that's why we're not that's why we have to get rid of ero and but, you're, but in your HSI. evidence it said by by you're gonna give HSI, the responsibility of ERO. Wouldn't you say that those unlawful deportations no. and busting down doors will the continue with HSI? Yeah, what, like this what, you completely, what you completely missed with our plan is that- It's just, a, those, just let us ask this one question. It's, it's still, really you simple. Have to, Why you have to let us let ask this question. This part literally says that- Let us no ask this no question. It's our time to ask the questions. Why are, no are you, why are you letting ERO get, <laughs> why are you letting HSI take over the responsibility no longer, of ERO? We are no longer feeding into that one strike policy that continues to deport immigrants because of things like jaywalking, because of things like traffic, uh, like, or, like traffic offenses, like those small things are things that immigrants are being deported of today. These are the, it's Okay, you obviously don't God. get the question, but deal with the policy. Okay, hold on. you that haven't answered the, the question that okay. ERO stays yeah. with HSI. So. Okay, listen, no, 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 because the responsibility, the responsibilities of ERO is to take out illegal immigrants who are doing actual pro like doing genuinely problematic things, right? How can you assure that the ERO, those, the, the, the ERO definition is of not doing that, which is why sense. we need to change that to the HSI because they have proven that they can handle that type of responsibility. So no, the ERO is not completing the job that they need to do, which is why we're putting that responsibility on HSI and best. All right, is that time? All right. Um, can I take uh, two minutes of prep real quick? Thank you. Is it possible if we can have breakout rooms so that we can jump into prep rooms? Question mark, question mark. Y'all do have Discord, right? Could you jump into your Discord rooms? It just makes it a little bit easier.
Adrienne Nuriel. Yes. Just want to confirm because I'm just doing this while I'm waiting for the debate. Y'all are going to NDCA. Yes. That's the that's April 10th through the 12th, by the way. But I just want to let 100%. you know that's the championship tournament. I want to confirm it because like I have to confirm it. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Um uh, I'm done with prep time FYI. Okay, um, cool. All right. Um when when you're ready, um here let me set my timer. Sorry. All right, um, reform is not good enough. ISIS is not broken. It's rooted in a racist history using raci racist methods, ideology, and supported by racist politicians. ICE produces xenophobia fueling an anti-immigrant campaign that frames immigrants as a threat to national security coded for the preservation of a white supremacist state. It's a nation building project reaching back to 9-11, sparking the criminalization and surveillance of immigrants and people of color. This violence manifests itself as ethnic cleansing, family separation, gendered violence, sterilization, and terrorization of our immigrant population and other human rights violations violations, relieve racial animosity and violence facing immigrants by uh, disbanding and, and defunding ICE. Durable fiat solves federal enforcement. This means that the resolution says the USFG should not, could, should not, could, means that the firm is granted the position that federal actors attempt to enforce the plan, ARC 17. The status quo for immigration policy is already pro-conservatism. The only way to the only way to mobilize politics is for the Democratic Party to support the passing of all abolish ICE, Loomis 18. The mainstream Democratic Party is scared of grassroots taking over. They're scared of the left version of the Tea Party. They are scared of bold policy proposals that challenge their, their carefully considered moderate stances that appeal to potential Wall Street Donalds. I felt the same reading by the editorial by Johnson against the abolish ICE movement. ICE is not, is not necessary for federal law enforcement. Johnson talks about how ICE, abolish ICE is destroying the chance for bipartisan immigrant immigration reform. What planet is he on? What is the constitution? Continuity for the Republican Party, the prospects for bipartisan immigration reform is not the Demo Democrats' outrage that ICE is separating babies from parents. It died many times before on the shoals of Republican racism, and now ethnic cleansing is the, is the official policy of the administration and congressional Republicans. There is no room for compromise. When you're facing fascists, there is no room for com compromise. There's a moral obligation to doing the plan. Anything else except is violence. See just 17. ICE was established in 2003 after Bush's propaganda of patriots and led to other state-funded human atrocities such as the age of modern surveillance in the Iraq war. ICE became the police force for the ongoing nativist campaign to criminalize and dehumanize immigrant communities. ICE is engaged in human rights violations that range from sexual assault to kidnapping children from the grasp of their parents to hold as political prisoners. Trumpism has allowed ICE's mechanism to function at its full potential. ICE is embedded embedded the violence across the country by turning all law enforcement agencies into oppressive tentacles already accustomed to enforcing laws built upon white anxieties against people of color. This created a system that do doubly punished undocumented immigrants. They criminalized and entangled them in a prison industrial complex. We believe that when law enforcers refuse to follow the will of the people, it is our moral duty to rise up and abolish them. From grassroots organizers to rising leftists, unseating established Dems, the time to abolish is now. To do so, we must be clear in our demands. So it is not to give an agency to the state or private interest to define what abolishment looks like. Those of us at the forefront are not shocked by the inhumanity of ICE and human rights violations. Violations have been going on for the past decade with no public backlash. We developed a deportation defense as a community-led liberation model from which we can build a world where ICE is abolished. Deportation defense campaigns are aimed at providing liberating models for undocumented immigrants in detention so that they may fight their legal cases out of, out of their cages where they are not provided access to, where they are provided legal representation. Through abolishment, we can extend this model to all immigrants currently detained. Permutation. Do the plan, then the counter plan. Maintaining HSI under st status quo is doomed to be complicit with the vi in the violent measures of customs enforcement. Only by implementing the plan first does it allow for comprehensive immigration policy making. The reform counter plan talks about, about the, the, what, what the CP talks about can happen after the plan is set. After the plan is passed, the, the stage is set for the responsibilities of HSI to be handed over to the FBI. There is no reason for HSI to be operating under its own jurisdiction with the white supremacist past. Only abolition solves. Reform allows for the continuation of white, a white supremacist ideology that will always find a way to justify detainment and other inhumane treatment of immigrants. Mijente 18, ICE exists to target immigrant communities for detention and deportation, locking up and exiling people is their sole purpose. ICE and Border Patrol combined are now the largest federal police force. Their budget is more than half of other 
of all other federal law enforcement agencies combined. They're accountable to no one. Criminalizing immigrants is what ICE does best. Under Trump, ICE has abandoned any pretense of restraint, which with their, their director openly stating he wants every immigrant to look over your shoulder. Unless ICE is stopped, they will continue to break into people's homes and workplaces to wait outside our schools and places of worship to prowl through courthouses and to target our activists, act, activists detaining and deporting some of us and terrorizing those left behind. Trump's brutal racist immigration police force has already demonstrated that they have the capacity to terrorize immigrants by separating parents and children. ICE is the police force capable of carrying out the white supremacist fantasy of ethnic cleansing. In the face of this danger, dissolving the agency is the only way forward. Imagining a, wor a world without ICE shouldn't be too hard. The agency has only been around for 15 years with its roots in the post-11 post 9-11 national panic that led to the framing of immigration as a national security issue. No linking case outweighs. HSI isn't necessary, but maintaining it is racist. Allen 18. There's no non-racist reason to support ICE and CBP. Ethnic cleansing is bad. Detention and deportations are ethnic cleansing mechanism. ICE and CBP serve as, as, an, as federal government's mass deportation machine. I understand that ICE has two primary components, HSI and ERL. I do not contest that HSI's functions are noble in theory. They do not justify the existence of immigration agencies under the DHS. These functions were not the responsibility of ICE and CBP prior to 2003. There is no reason that they still need to be. The stakes can be higher. White supremacy is responsible for massive global violence and oppression and its continued acceptance risks human extinction. Commissioning 13. An ideological war on white supremacy would do humanity immense favors, especially the people of color who are terrorized by it every day of their lives. White supremacy is the most nefarious ideology created by white people for white people. White supremacy rears its hideous head throughout the globe and has been responsible for well over 100 million deaths. White supremacy not only kills bodies, it destroys minds. It is the program to the program to believe that white people are inherently better than all other people. White supremacy is most effective in its ideological form. Everything else is destructive manifestation of that ideology. The U.S is a society that routinely routinely abuses and destroys the lives of people of color. African, Black, Indigenous, Latino, Brown communities are systemically targeted by the way of white supremacists and institutionally racist war that is being waged upon them. Mass incarceration, the prison industrial complex, and police brutality are all lethal aspects of white supremacy. White supremacy is a social disease that infects entire societies. It is a plague that has only gotten stronger and more deceptive through its existence. The U.S. has was a sincere and justice-oriented nation. If it were a sincere and justice-oriented nation, it would wage an all-out war on the ideology of white supremacy aimed at destroying all vestiges of a most most deadly and disproportionate white power structure. The U.S.'s ongoing existence as a white settler nation precludes it from waging a noble war on white supremacy. The U.S.'s wars are ultimately justified by white supremacy and capitalism. Resistance to white supremacy, supremacist ideology is paramount. If you believe in humanity, you must join us in the resistance. White supremacy is most deadly social mal malady that has given birth to apartheid, Jim Crow, mass murder, sh chattel slavery. The list literally goes on. White supremacy is killing masses of people physically and ment mentally. Um, turn the CP causes our extinction impacts. Maintaining the HSI perpetuates race, racial profiling and human rights violations in service of a white supremacist agenda. HSI's messages are predicted on racialized stereotypes that criminalize immigrants. ICE is doing what it is built to do, criminalize immigrants, separate families, and terrify undocumented folks, all to deflect blame on people who are often, often here fleeing untenable situations in their countries of origin to distract from the harm they are inflicting on everyone. ICE is an agency of white nationalism promoting and acting on xenophobia and racism as a core policy of administration. All right, that is time. Um, one second. All right. Um, all right. I am open to cross X. Okay. Starting time now. Um, okay. First of all, uh, how do you prevent extinction? Um, well, we, by tackling a major, uh, major a major piece of core of white supremacy by um because white supremacy could eventually lead to extinction um if it so, is not okay, stopped so, or tackled so, in it so following up on that are you saying that by abolishing ice you're abolishing this huge part of white supremacy a big part of it yes okay did white supremacy exist before ice yes it did so how does getting rid of ice actually solve for white supremacy um but right now, um, white supremacy is acting is at the very top of the government. Um, back then, the difference between now and back then is back then, white supremacy um, 
So are you just telling me it's status quo but without ice? If you really I'm sorry. Think about, if you really are you just telling me that this is your whole plan is just status quo without ice? If you think about uh, it, no, 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 no. Our plan is uh, the status quo. No, no, it's not the status quo, but it is abolishing ice, but also which by abolishing ice leads to many other is a huge symbolic step. Um, to symbolic. Make okay, so you don't actually do anything to stop. No, no, no. Okay, so, okay uh, we'll so move on to our next what question. What to the money that? Uh, where does the money from abolish ice go to? Um. So, in in our like I said in my evidence, uh, by perming we are having, uh, the FBI take uh take over the parts of HSI that are good, like sex trafficking, like you said, um, and the 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 drug smuggling and the real crimes. Um, so uh, a lot of okay. the money will be directed towards the, that, that. I'll move on to my idea. next question. Um, how exactly do you abolish, like how are you abolishing ICE? How is this happening? Well, actually, um, I think we're granted the fiat. So um, it, federal actors were, will enforce it no matter what. So- But which federal actors? Um, the government, the- Which part of the government? The, do you even know? The, the Congress will pass it, then the Senate, and then the president, and it will become law. Um, so what if the president vetoes it? How do you know the president won't? The federal it? actors will, inf will enforce it. He, he is a federal actor. So how does this how does this spill up to real life advocacy? I'm sorry? Do you have any out of ground uh, solvency? No. OK. OK, cool. Um, going on to our next question. I didn't even what say does abolition like look like. What does abolition look like? Getting rid of. Do you want me to read the, the plain text again? Disfunding and disbanding ICE. Is ICE a necessary start to, uh, no, why is ICE your start, your starting point? Because it tackles a large amount of white supremacy. Okay, um, Jan, do you have any other questions? And also going back to what my partner it's said. It's time, that was time. That's cool. process. Um, I'll take, time we'll keep our pre our full time our prep Dylan um I will say some things I'll kind of I'm gonna give intermittent uh commentary um kind of throughout so I'm not really saying much about kind of the arguments right now, but I'll speak kind of st uh, stylistically. Um, I think that we need to work on the kind of presentation of the 2AC because the kind of how it sounds, is just like you're reading cards, right? Or there's not like pauses or like, you know, this debate comes down to, or the, the uh, one AC is necessary and starting point for X, Y, and Z reasons. It just kind of sounds like a list of just evidence, um, which like the evidence is a correct thing to read, but part of the two AC is that you're creating the story, right? That you're kind of being comparative. Um, like for the example, the counter plan, uh, you're like, if it comes down to the permutation, which, um, you know, I think you made, right? Yes, no, right? But making, but see, like making that clear, you know, like permutation, this comes down to, I think that maybe how you're presenting the 2AC, it just kind of sounds like one block of words and there's not things that are popping off to judges, right? So really figuring out how to like, think of this as instead of just text all the way down for eight minutes, where are you bracketing that? So that there are pauses, that, that you're making big statements, like this debate comes down to this, or if they can't prove why the permutation doesn't blah, 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 that, that means you vote affirmative, right? Or at the end of the day, the thing that matters most is having those phrases, um, hold, or the, the judge holds for a while, right? Because at the end of the debate, like I have to decide, is that the correct characterization for the round? Right, like if the counter plan cannot resolve this thing that the affirmative has said, does that mean I vote affirmative, right? But if you don't kind of put in that judge direction and just kind of that framing, it makes it harder for the judge to remember what are the important parts, right? There's a difference between just saying all the right, like, you know, having all the pieces and making those pieces matter. Does that make, does that distinction make sense? Right? 
Um, that's the kind of persuasive part um, about debate that gets really, you know, strategic is that you're really playing a game with how can you get the judge to believe and look at the debate exactly like you, right? So I would look back to your 2AC and start looking at where am I inserting those phrases? Where yeah. am I comparing the affirmative and the negative argument, right? Not just reading cards, not just saying the things, but where am I comparing? Where am I saying this comes down to, or even if they win, right? Yeah. Where are those phrases and but putting I, those in? I thought that we're like supposed to do that in the rebuttals and like reference nope. that. That should start around. like, cause the, yes, the, the 2AC is a constructive, right? Um, but it is not the one AC or the one NC. The one AC, you know, cards are being read. You're introducing the app. There's not much, you know, in terms of um, key distinctions or phrases. You should read the affirmative persuasively, of course. Uh, same thing for the one NC. The one NC is just getting the arguments out, not doing all of the legwork of creating the story. But that's where from the two AC down, right? Once those things have been introduced into the debate, that the debate really starts in comparison, right? With making statements that are bold and are held by the judge. You don't wanna wait till the 1AR because the block happened, right? And the block is generally gonna say things that, you know, the two and C and the one and R, they're gonna like, this debate comes down to X, Y, and Z. This matters. What the, what the affirmative said, wrong. Da, 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 da. So if you're not kind of saying your own statements in the two AC, you're leaving that all for the one AR in a shortened amount of time, right? In comparison to the two and C in one and R, right? Which is like 13 minutes of talking to have to start making all this, no, that's not true. This is what matters. The debate comes down to, and it's kind of, I don't wanna say late, but it is harder, right? For the affirmative vision to start at the one AR. You want the affirmative vision to start truly at the two AC. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. You heard that, Enzo? So that 1AR, I need to hear the affirmative vision, right? Okay. Okay, we stopped time at 5.30. Do you need it in the chat, Ms. Jasmine? Or? Um, do you want me to send out my docs? You're muted. Y'all you can if you would like. I think that it's good practice. Nice. Just to kind of get into it. Okay, cool, yo. Yeah. Save. You're music in your head, Jan. Yeah, I have the one really stupid TikTok stuck in my head and it's really annoying. <laughs> not TikTok. I don't even have TikTok. It's Instagram Reels. Ugh. Oh my God, Reels. I, I spend too much time on Reels. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, where is my dog? Hey, tech. Heck yeah. Boop. Never mind. Um... It'll be in chat if you wanted to see it. Um, but the order will be uh, counterplan, then K. Uh, I'm so used to saying K, but counterplan, then case. Um, let me know when y'all are ready. I'm ready. We're ready. Cool. Um, let me go get my timer. My bad. Okay, I'll start time on my first word. 
The ad fails to make lasting change that will protect immigrants from white supremacy in the U.S. Throughout cross sex they have failed to say who will enact the plan and when white supremacy would cease to exist. Abolishing ICE is not a comprehensive plan and lacks the details to, uh, needed to address the deeper impacts of white supremacy and ultimately doesn't stop white politicians from using loopholes within the government to replace ICE and maintain violence against the communities of colors, extend our Morris Day 19 and Dunlap Denver 19 card. The only way to make comprehensive change is to vote night prefer reform to abol uh, to abolition to make lasting uh, impacts in the uh, that prevent circumvention with policy oriented action they simply cheap out by getting rid of one thing that doesn't even address our larger government they are literally status quo with uh without ice how is this solving for anything they fail to see how ice is only a is one part of a broader immigration system that uh, that continues deportations with uh, the DOJ, particularly the, uh, the Department of Homeland Security uh, uh, and the Executive Office for Immigration Review, uh, which all handle matters of deportations. They only uh, they only uh, abolish ICE. Um, just extending our counter plan. Uh, our counter plan is that the uh, reforming immigration laws to change all immigration crimes to civil offenses and directing HSI to focus on immigration enforcement solely on criminals and national security threats. The app simply fails to make the mark on what um, we're doing. Judge, just to clarify, we are first getting rid of all, uh, making making it so that immigration crimes are no longer these one strike offenses that continue deep to deport immigrants. Uh, the affirmative said themselves, like um, uh, deportations will continue to happen regardless. So uh, the best way that we can uh, start to um, fight against those deportations is to make uh, is to make laws that no longer target uh, immigrants through these minor crimes instead of um, instead of being deported for simply uh, um, jaywalking or these smaller crimes, they would get a fine. And uh, the real issues that we'd be focusing on here is drugs, uh, is things like drug smuggling. And second of all, uh, directing HSI to focus on immigration enforcement solely on criminals and national security threats. This again, this once again means that this is that HSI would only be focusing on uh, they on major crimes such as sex trafficking or um, or uh, drug smuggling. Um, just going on to my cards, that uniquely is key to dismantle global networks, uh, Johnson 20. I saw the track, of, uh, track record of uh, action with HSI. Our global footprints allow us to strategically position work with our law enforcement as well as non-governmental organizations to identify and dismantle these criminal networks. And yes, HSI can solve human trafficking. Research, uh, recent uh, actions prove it's effective. HSI coordination is necessary to dismantle global networks, which prove linked to the DA. Um, HSI had say 19. Human smuggling in Brazil has been disrupted. HSI uh, working in concert with HSI Brasilia, the IOCI, uh, HSI liaison, DOD, and the NTC. And human trafficking affects every facet of society and destroys every life that it touches, not just victims. Over 12 million people are trafficked worldwide in McCormick 11. In 2004, the U.S. approximated that 600,000 and 800,000 are trafficked internationally annually, which uh, of which 80% are female and 50% are minors of the 70% of females being trafficked for commercial with sex exploitation. ILO estimates that 2.4 million people are in labor, uh, in forced labor worldwide as a result of trafficking out of um, estimated 12.3 million people worldwide. The consequences of, are devastating for victims in larger community. Uh, the scale of uh, trafficking also deals with a particular blow to gender equality and human rights presents a train on law enforcement and uh, affects security and uh, health systems. Trafficking represents a loss of opportunities domestically including an irretrievable loss of human resources and future productivity. Given that the annual uh, level of remittances to developing countries is an estimated U.S. 30, um, 325 billion, the lack of remittances from traffic victims can imply a loss of development and the forced forms of child labor and by extension trafficking represents a loss in productivity capacity of generations of individuals who would otherwise uh, have gained uh, increased education and improved health and funds that currently used to fight tra uh, trafficking may be um, channeled towards alternative development initiatives work on benefits to the in terms of remittances and human capital, there are other human and social costs to developing uh, attributable to trafficking. Um, I'll cut the card there. So basically, our impact of sex trafficking outweighs the affirmative not only does nothing to solve for white supremacy, but they again make sex trafficking worse. This makes the lives of many um, of many trafficked peoples worse as again, 
like HSI is crucial to addressing sex trafficking and is much more easy and realistic to start here. We have way extend the Robertson 17 card. HSI has given, uh, gotten rid of thousands of criminals that the FBI hasn't done in all the years before HSI existence. And moving money to the, uh, to the FBI doesn't ensure that they'll do the job that uh, HSI best has. Again, simply like we, um, the app is primarily just based on that uh, on that uh, ERO part of us. They fail to see the deeper ways in which uh, HSI has been able to help many immigrants, has, has been able to help many people who are often um, trafficked. And again, they don't do anything to change the policies. This makes worse education as we are not able to bring real um, like real life advocacies, real life policies that will actually be able to um, do anything, uh, reject the perm because again, they can't, they can't abolish ICE then simply move. Like they're double turning on themselves uh, here as again, um, FBI hasn't been able to do any of the stuff that HSI existed. HSI is one of the, is one of the only agencies who are, are able to uh, be able to this. This proves that the perm is not viable. And if we went on magnitude as we are able to help more people now, this we have a clear time frame as to when this happens because again, we don't have to falsely hope for the uh, for movements. We don't have to falsely hope that uh, somehow white supremacy will no longer exist. We start doing stuff now to help immigrants, to help immigrants no longer um, like uh, with better policies that will be able to comprehensively be able to make uh, make them fear less. Uh, just continuing on um, with my other cards uh going on to case uh agency circumvent research fails to consider the governmental agencies that are not formally involved with ICE circumvent good uh, 20 we too frequently fail to examine how governmental agencies are not formally involved in law enforcement agency facilitate the abuse of migrants given the vast shadow of the network's institution dedicated to carrying the mass surveillance detention and deportation of immigrants and Negative state uh, reform has no meaningful impact. The USFG will find other loopholes to continue its efforts to detain illegal immigrants. Instead, we need to have a fundamental rethink of the uses of recurring approaches to migration. Don't knock Denver 19. The call to abolish this is virtually meaningless. Produce a few changes to the current practice if duties are merely distri distributed, which is what they were saying with the uh, perm. Establishing a human uh, immigration enforcement system act with abolish ICE, but retain essential functions. Mahente offers a circularly grounded vision of what an alternative to current practices must entail proposal and understanding the use of the government budgeted approach and migration is part of the parcel of broader policies that maintain the subordination and historical of historically subordinated groups. Mahente's vision thus extends far beyond the mere abolition of an agency. Rather, it recalls uh, calls for a fundamental rethinking of the occurrences of the U.S.'s current uh, approaches to migration and approaches that relies on racist criminal justice system to divide our communities between those uh, labeled deserving of humanitarian reform and those who will be left in the system. Again, Again, what they their literal um call their literal reading of abolish ice is not enough to rethink the ways in which the system has continued to um again hurt immigrants through policy open for cossacks okay so it looks like it's just gonna be me for the rest of the debate Ooh. um sex is dylan okay yeah he's really tired and he just can't he couldn't do it right now okay i'll fill him in later um, all right. So for, I would just, for my first question would be, uh, about FBI is about the FBI. Why is the FBI, why would take, why would the FBI taking over some part, some parts, not the entirety of HSI, but some parts of HSI be bad? So, okay. So the FBI has obviously existed longer than ICE. If the FBI, and we know that America has had money for forever okay if there's nothing there's no difference between that and the actual status quo like why had we've seen all of our car all of our cards have stated that hsi has done so much better of a job of reducing um criminals off of the streets uh, sex trafficking cr human trafficking criminals right so giving money to fbi is just isn't doing anything when hsi is already doing so much more uh in the short time that it's existed in comparison to the long lasting times of FBI. Uh, another question. When FBI, when FBI takes over the responsibilities, uh, some of the responsibilities of HSI, the uh, FBI will, in, will get a significant e increase in funding. Is that a bad thing? 
Sorry, I don't remember where in your plan it says you're giving money to the FBI. The, the money that we're, I believe my partner in the 2AC mentioned that in the, in the, F, the FBI would take over the, the money would be spread to the FBI that was saved from the rest of ICE. And why would that be such a bad thing? Well, the FBI would, again, like, reinvest in policing marginalized communities. This, again, doesn't actually do anything to, like, like, simply giving it to bigger police forces is not enough. We already have a force in which, like, they specifically target drug smuggling and specifically have been able to, again, solve. Like, if you've seen half of our cards other than the two NC, they've shown solvency with this, simply saying, simply falsely believing that the FBI will simply do the job better, which my partner has said, again, they've existed for a while they didn't do crap before that again that doesn't really do anything why go through the extra hassle when we already have those systems in place all we have to do is get rid of the ero which is the uh, only thing that you y'all are like again is um so the next question i would like to ask is what did the united states do before the creation of ice for these larger these larger drug and sex trafficking we've seen that the that's the point of HSI, right? Before ICE, everything was literally, not before ICE, before HSI. ICE caused mass terror, but HSI has been able to do so much more in terms of actually um, uh, getting rid of major criminals, right? Which is why we need to get rid of ERO because they've only made things worse. Whereas HSI has been able to, um, as our cards say, help the community. Um, I'm ready for the one and R. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Oops. Starting timer in three, two, one. Okay, judge, there are three reasons why you're going to be voting for the negative. One, we solve best for education. We, we are the best for education. We actually give you an idea of something that is plausible in real life. Like um, our plan is ridiculously feasible because um, one, like, because our plan calls for changing um, very specific things within the thing. So we're going to be uh, reforming the immigration laws that change the immigration criminals into civil offenses and then directing HSI to focus immigration enforcement solely on criminals and national security threats, um, which is much more feasible than just being like, oh, well, ICE, get rid of everything. Um, secondly, sorry. Secondly, we solve their impacts, ex extending the Sure 18 card. They keep saying that like, they're gonna solve for this huge part of white supremacy they're not gonna be able to do that. The uh, AF has given no clear examples as to how they actually do that. Um, oof. You need to err on the side of NEG as the AF is politically infeasible and other agencies step in to create more anti-immigrant policies that ultimately hurt communities of color. The government will always find a way around ICE to ensure the, their reign of white supremacy. ICE is not the only government in charge of immigrant. It's not the only government agency in charge of immigration. It's part of a huge system that includes um, the USCIS and the UN and, and CBP. The AF misses the root of the problem being that people in power now rather than policy, being that like uh, people in power now rather than policies since the AFIS only focuses on ICE rather than large governmental, than the, our larger governmental system. If we can prove that the AF is too small to solve their impact, vote neg. Um, thirdly, we are the best first step because we are giving a way in which we're not just getting rid of, um, we're not just getting rid of ICE and then leaving uh, the policies to fall into the cracks. We're literally telling you, this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna make sure that immigrants in the future, um, immigrants in the future are not terrorized because I don't know, they drove too fast on the freeway. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, I'm gonna continue our false hope argument. The NEG, the AF has continued saying that by abolishing ICE, they are getting rid of this huge part of white supremacy. But like we kept saying, agency circumvent. White supremacy still exists. They even said this in cross sex. White supremacy existed before ICE ever came into existence. There's nothing like just getting rid of 
it's not even that major of a part. Like ice just so happens to be this, they said symbolic part of white supremacy, which means that it still runs rampant, except great, there's no ice now. There's also no way to solve for the amount of good that HSI has done over the years. Um, thirdly, I'm gonna reject the perm again. Judge, they can't call for abolition and then say, they can't call for abolition and be like reform's bad, but also saying actually reform's good because we kind of need it. Um, yeah, they, they have, mm, the app ultimately has no solvency out of rounds and yeah. Ultimately judge, the counter plan is the only way you're gonna, you're gonna be able to vote like feasibly. We, um, we're providing you with the best ways that we can take this information and enact it and vote for people who have the power to get rid of the torturous uh, things that ERO has done and instead opt for the fact that HSI has been able to do so much good and things that the FBI hasn't been able to done in years of its existence. Um, yeah. Uh, our Dunlop Denver 9, uh, our Dunlop, bleh, sorry, our Dunlop Denver 19 card talks about how other agencies find loopholes and take up the functions of ICE. The AF then makes things worse because they can just function under a different name. The government will redistribute the functions of ICE in different, different agencies that make it impossible, i.e. the FBI. Um, hold the AF to a higher threshold and make them prove that they lead to the prevention of mass deportations. They still haven't explained uh, haven't justified the or talked about the fact that they still cause mass deportations. The very own plan text says that it will defund and disband ICE, not stopping the deportations, not changing broader immigration policies, only that it will defund or disband ICE. They don't solve um, and they don't stop mass deportations. In fact, under the Biden administration, people are still being deported. If you don't buy our counter plan, then you should vote for NAG because they don't solve. Um, that's time. Right, I'm going to concede the rest of my time. Okay, uh, Judge Ready. All right. So the first talking point I would like to mention is because the NIG just mentioned it in their uh, one NR speech. Uh, we don't just want to abolish ICE. We want to abolish the entire function of ICE. That which means we want to abolish the part. We don't just want to abolish I. We don't just want to abolish the name ICE. We don't just want to abolish the thing that is currently ICE. We want to abolish everything that is and will be, or will, with our plan, won't be ICE. The next thing I would like to talk about is the, that I would like to, I would like to tell the judge how our perm will work because we don't need reform for our perm as the NAG believes we do. We don't because we're not talking about taking HSI and giving it to the HSI, or sorry, FBI. We're talking about taking the most important parts and creating something new with it, with having more funding and having the, a better ability to do these big jobs that the NEG believes we need. The next thing I'd like to mention is that the NEG has never showed what the world looks like after the abolishment of ICE the affirmative has. It shows a much better world. The AF shows a much better world where people are not scared to go to go outside, to go to school, to go to family, or as the NAG likes to say, jaywalk. The AF addresses, um, the NAG will get rid of, the NAG says they will get rid of deportations entirely, which is not a good thing. Getting, re getting rid of deportations entirely means getting rid of the ability to deport serious criminals and serious threats. Another reason I believe the perm will work is because we can also turn crimes into civil offenses. That is outside the scope of the agency of ICE. That is for Congress to decide, not the agency itself. Um, immigrants will feel safer in, with the AF plan because it's not just what ICE does, it's the name ICE. If the HSI continues under the scope of ICE, that will still spread through, spread fear through immigrant communities. The, I would like to, uh, the next thing I'd like to mention is that 
I would like to mention the durable fiat. The neg keeps the neg keeps stating that who is going who's going to pass the law who's going to pass abolish ICE. It will already be passed with the durable fiat. The neg says that I would like to go back to my point about how uh, the next point I'd like to talk about is that the neg says the HSI will take over the ERO. The neg never fully answer that question we kept asking it in their on our first cross x and they never gave us a straight answer which the neg originally said in their one and the one and r sorry the one and c uh the neg believes that the hsi will take over the ero er the, the hsi will take take over the ero but earlier they said ero is harming the entire agency's reputation which means which means they're counter contradicting themselves. They both want to get rid of ERO because it is because it is harming the entire reputation of the agency, but they also want to keep it for no for reasons that they have not explained. I I would like to talk about my last talking point before I wrap up is the extinction impact. The the, the AF absolutely solves for uh, the neg never solves for extinction impact because my partner failed to mention this but if you look around the world if you look around the united states um extinction has been happening for many years it's not just I mean, slow slowly sure but if you look at and i'm not trying to run the k here but what i'm trying to say is back all the way when the colonizers first came to the united states they they made many indigenous people to the United States almost extinct. I would like to restate the plan before my time is up. The United States federal government should defund and disband Immigrations and Customs Enforcement ICE. And all of what I have said gives the judge more than enough reasons to vote AF. I can see the rest of my 10 seconds. I'll take the rest of cross X. I mean, not cross X. Uh, prep. Great job, Dylan. Or, sorry, Enzo. Thanks.
Um, the order will be counterplan then case. I'll signpost when I get to each. Oop, sorry. Uh, Uh, I'll start time on my first word. Is everyone good? I'm going to assume yes. Yeah, I'm ready. Judge, you are going to be voting next for two reasons. First, is the ab is abolition uh, is infeasible unless there's a well thought out plan. But if the app is unable to provide a clear plan as to how it functionally works, where through the where through the government does it go through? How do they ensure that uh, it doesn't get co-opted by other movements? Uh, then you should be voting neg without any way to actively prevent things like ice from occurring again. The app fails to solve, and you should be again voting neg. And they make it even they make it even. Wor uh, they make even worse policies uh, to be put in place because uh, which exponentially is worse than status quo. During cross sex, they have conceded that they are literally the status quo uh, without ice. And second of all, err on the side of neck because uh, the app is politically infeasible as other agencies step in to create more anti-immigrant policies that hurt, to com uh, that hurt communities of colors. The government will always find a way around ice to ensure their reign of white supremacy. Ice is not only is not uh, the only part of the government in charge of immigration. Again, they were part of a broader immigration. Thing Things such as uh, the U.S. Citizen and Immigration Services, the UCIS, and the C U.S. Custom and Border Patrol, uh, CBP. The app completely misses the root of the problem, being the people in power now rather than the policy, uh, rather than again the, the simply the agency of ICE and the uh, and. The app again solely focuses on Iceland rather than our larger governmental system. If we prove the app is too small to solve their impact, vote neg. Uh, starting with the counterplan debate, reject their perm. Their perm was read of it like uh, their perm again wants to reform, wants to again give, the, as they say, uh, like simply it just isn't feasible to happen. Sim uh, giving it giving it to a new agency to the FBI again. We already have an agency in place. This doesn't make any sense as to why the government would want to go through a longer a longer system to again make these other policing pro um, policies second of all um extend all of the extend or extend all of the harms of the perm um they haven't really given us a reason as to what as to how like other agencies would solve um again um uh, what they miss the mark with the uh with the reform counterplan is that one first of all we get rid of these one strike policies and second of all um like giving hsi the um the like euros well it's just basically to be able to remove the serious criminals the people who are actively again doing the drug smuggling rather than the civil offenses and after the f again these things like immigrants will continue to be deported because of minor civil um of minor civil things like this doesn't actually change the scope of the ways in which immigrants would be facing uh, again these fears of deportation getting rid of deportations entirely would be something like uh, again something that would happen like something that the app is doing we didn't say that we uh, didn't get rid of uh, deportations we just said you don't get rid of mass deportation of innocent people um extend our notice say 18 card um again we sell best in second and the app is politically infeasible and extend our dunlap 18. second of all now going on case um like they completely untouch our no solvency argument they don't really give a way in which they solve for ice this leads to less real world education as to how we can physically be able to bring this out into the world that makes things that makes things worse because again um again there's nothing that can be able to happen they don't actually solve for white supremacy they don't even solve for that step of white supremacy meaning they don't get access to their impact extinction why hasn't extinction happened now why hasn't extinction happened before the of uh, um before ice they don't really say um second of all uh sex trafficking outweighs because again we give a physical of viable way in which we can actively fight against sex, uh, sex trafficking actively stop it and that again is through um the hsi again for all of the reasons um the negative outweighs uh just continuing on our case arguments um extend our agency circumvent again they haven't really touched this either um uh this is a clear win for the negative because again like other agencies will continue to 
enforce the role of vice under different names and immigrants will again they want to live in a utopia that isn't the reality for immigrants we need to start with the policies and uh again these policies are the only ways in which we can stop the targeting of innocent immigrants rather than um, um like actual serious criminals abolishing ice will not do anything and will create false hope that will continue to happen uh, that will continue to allow these impacts of white supremacy to happen for all of these reasons judge um judge you should be voting negative you should be voting for us because one we are the only um you should be voting for us because one we are the only ones who are prevented who are presenting an actual policy and two we show that even if the app doesn't solve the app doesn't do anything to solve uh for all of these reasons vote nay Uh, I'll, this may be a little bit finicky since I'm not used to doing two, but, um, judge ready. All right. Um, I would like to go back to my, I, I would like to go back to my partner's first point in the one and out in the one and R A R about the neg does not, has not ever showed what the world will look like after ice. The affirmative has the, the neg the world in the neg after after reform will look much worse it'll look like immigrants are still in hiding because ice is still there they'll be they'll be scared to go out they'll be scared to do their pre to supposedly do their precious jaywalking or anything that the negative has stated the Next thing I'd like, to, just the next thing I'd like to quickly go over is what my partner also mentioned about the NAG believing that the, the HSI should take over the responsibilities of ERO while still saying that the ERO is not good. The, the NAG never, well, and the ERO is bringing down the entire reputation of the agency. The bad, the thing about the NAG is they never responded to that argument at all. The durable fiat says that we have we have should not could we can pass this bill and the neg does not does not sound like they can comprehend what that is um they the us works on and another going back to before ice other agencies have worked on sex and drug trafficking before ice has created with the fbi the a the aft can create something that works on a larger scope of creating something that will work on sex and drug trafficking that is not based in the racist rhetoric of ICE. The, the perm will, again, the perm will work because with, we can also, because as my partner stated, we can also create something, we can also use turn crimes and civil offenses because that is outside the scope of ICE. That is not part of the agency, it is part of the, part of the larger government. ICE, abolish ICE is a comprehensive plan because it abolishes ICE and then creates something new under the scope of the FBI. The extinction impact does work because overlap, uh, the extinction has already happened. Over the last hundreds, few hundred years, immigrant, immigrants, in, immigrant communities have start, slowly started to die out of the United States. If you look back all the way, as my partner said, back to the set, back to the set, back to the settlers, they, they wiped out many of the indigenous people to the United States before there they came and started doing, started creating a new government there. The the neg believes that the AF is creating false hope, but the neg, the neg themselves are creating false hope because when immigrants hear that they're starting to reform, the, when there's some there's changes happening to ICE, they'll believe that ICE is getting ICE is becoming gone. And something I'd like to mention personally is a, only a few hours ago, I was driving around Alameda with my mom and I saw a, I saw some graffiti saying, um, abolish ice. And that just shows how the people of the U S feel about the, about our plan. The, again, I would like to go back to the name of ice. It's not just the, it's not just abolishing ice. It's not just abolishing the ice. It's abolishing the name of ICE. Immigrants will still live in fear with the name ICE still being around. Also, the name ICE is a campaign tactic that is used by white supremacists to this day to show how, how what they're doing is right and good. They can still use that with the NAGS plan, with the AFS plan, that will be abolished and white supremacy 
will will start to become uh, neg. The AF solves for it begins to solve in a much larger way than the neg does for white supremacy, um, and that is why that that is why the judge should vote for the AF. I yield the rest of my time. Good debate. Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent job to all of you all. I'm going to end the recording here. So for those that watch this debate, um, hopefully y'all took in a lot of the stuff because every, and when there were four debaters and these three debaters uh, were an excellent example of good debating um, this packet, especially if you are competing at the April 17th through 18th tournament. So yes, I'm gonna stop the recording.